Hey guys, and welcome back to Pro Speed Baseball. We're back with Araldus Chapman, and we're breaking down his mechanics piece by piece to show you how he efficiently and effectively uses each one of these pieces to maximize velocity. Let's get started. Now guys, are you ever pitching and you and you let one go and it's just a lot harder than the other ones you've been throwing? You're like, wow, what did I do right there? I just threw that really hard. And then other ones you throw and they just don't have anything on it. Well, this is going to be a great video for you guys because we're going to learn how to sink our upper and lower body with proper hand separation. And more importantly, we're going to learn when to separate the hands and how to keep them in sync with our upper body. And by doing this, we're going to take full advantage of all the big muscles in our body and maximize the amount of speed we can gain and minimize the stress we put on the arm. Let's go ahead and get started. And when we're talking about separation, we're talking about when the ball actually leaves the glove. So when the ball is actually taken away from the glove. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about hand separation. Now the biggest problem I see with most pitchers when it comes to separation is that they're very late with their separation. And by late I mean they're separating after the foot's already well on its way towards the plate. And what this does, it now forces us to be very quick to bring the ball back and then try to get the arm back around in front of the body, forcing us to use the small muscles in the arm to try to play catch up with the lower body. And that's the last thing we want to do, guys. We're going to end up putting a ton of strain on the arm to try to get it to catch up with the lower body. And this kills velocity, leads to weak throws, and is extremely hard to be accurate with due to the fact that we are all out of sync with our body. And, that, and, that's, not, and that's not what I quite imagine what we want as a pitcher to throw it slower and less accurate. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you exactly when we want those hands to separate. And guys, as simply put, we want to separate our hands as our stride foot starts going forward towards the plate. And a great way to key off of this, guys, is to imagine like there's almost our glove and our front knee are tied together and then they're gonna be going at the same rate. So we can see if we draw a line down there, it's gonna get a little bit ahead of it, but it's a great visual to have to feel like the glove is going to follow the knee and that as soon as the knee starts going forward, we're taking the ball back. And this is gonna ensure that we get properly timed separation so that the ball is going back as the stride foot is going forward. And this is going to aid in helping us stretch out all the big muscles and more importantly, time the stretching up so that we can utilize the big muscles in the throw. So now that we know when to separate, now we just need to understand how we separate. We're gonna concentrate on our forward arm here, and what we're gonna do when we separate, we wanna get the palm of our lead hand working towards the catcher, almost like if there was an eye in the palm of our hand, it would be pointing at the catcher as we're separating. Now, as this gets going forward, it's gonna actually be pointing up but the initial move in the separation is we're going to get our front palm working towards the catcher. And then we continue this palm movement up towards the sky to get the glove arm ready for the power pull into the throw. And what we're gonna do with the throwing arm as we separate is we're gonna get the karate chop part of the hand. So if you're gonna karate chop something with your throwing hand, that's the part of the hand we're gonna want to feel going back. We're not gonna get our palm going back because that would put our back shoulder in a very uncomfortable position. So that's a very easy way to think about taking this ball back is take the karate chop part of the hand back as the glove hand palm is going towards the catcher. So guys, if we time the separation with our lower body correctly and we get the glove going with the knee towards the plate, we're gonna be perfectly synced up with our upper body and if we get our glove hand palmed facing towards the catcher during separation, it's gonna put our front arm in a very powerful position to get the power pull back to slingshot the arm forward. And if we get the karate chop part of our hand going back as well, it's gonna put our hand in a great relaxed position to get the ball up and ready to go. Now guys, stay tuned. I got a great bonus coming up for you right now. If you wanna learn more about this separation or some of the most important power positions you need to be in as a pitcher to maximize velocity, I'm gonna play a preview from one of the videos in our pitching series. And if you click on the link in the preview, it's gonna take you to a place where you can see the entire pitching series. Go ahead and check that out, guys. Let me know what you think. Work on this stuff and I'll see you guys soon. We're going to go palm down and we're gonna make sure that our palm immediately starts working towards facing the catcher. So if there was a, an eyeball on my palm, it would be looking directly at the catcher. And we're gonna make sure that our hand is rotated downwards, almost like our fingers are gonna be sticking down into the ground. Okay, so palm down, 
palm back out with our fingers down, and that's how we separate the front side. Now the back side, if